So, as you recall, you are standing around the charred remains of the old uh, bone pressure mill where the night had Morgantha and her daughters, right. uh, Bella and Ophelia, had made green pastries. You have plucked a little bit of uh, melted jewelry from the rubble. And now it's up to you uh, to get the rest of the way to Valaki with the ill Irina and her brother Ismark. All right, I believe we took the um, the cart back, so we're still with everyone, and we're headed north. I think without any further ado, not sitting around the um, the ashes, we'll uh, we'll load everybody up. All right. It is a shame that our other show is going to be so so good. We really brought the house down here. <laughs> yes, yes, we uh... did. With lots of fire. Okay. So, um, the, the, the going is very easy, uh, but you notice that the, um, the, the, Normally, dim weather has gotten downright dark, even though you're pretty sure it's only mid-afternoon. Um, it is almost like a nighttime anywhere else, with how thick the cloud cover has gotten, and the just the deep growth of the clouds. All right, we have a we have a good light source. I would imagine we're just going to keep our eyes out all along the road until we get to Velaki. <laughs> Seems like somebody's excited that they learned a new spell. Use the low beams, Travic. <laughs> Bring a hammer. I don't know about warlocks and I don't know about warlocks and utility. Anyway, <laughs> I never had fun with warlocks and utility spells because you only get so many slots. Anyway, so you have a, a nice, uh, simple trip until you get to about here. And as you round the last corner, you see that same girl, oh. uh, young woman, that you had seen on the road to the old bone crusher. Are we on she the other sort map? Of uh, yep, I forgot to drag you guys over. Apologies. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're... There? Okay, cool. Music. Alright. And, um, the girl is standing off a bit to the side of the road, but still visible from the road. As you round the corner, she's up a up, uh, few yards, a uh, good enough distance that you could come to a stop to address her, if you chose. Did we actually pick up any of the burnt dream pastries? <laughs> They're made I think with you guys children. did mention that. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, the smart ass in me really wants to be like, here you go. <laughs> That would make her a cannibal, right? Well, that's true. Yeah, I guess we do know that... We Now we know that those were made out of children. That's pretty disgusting. I wonder if she knew that. I wonder if she'd care. Yeah, sugar, spice, everything nice. Why not? Perhaps we should take her along with us to Velaki. You won't let her ride in the carriage with us. Right next to you, right? Is she too you young for you? Her. 
Is she um, still like crying or upset? Like no. Almost... In fact, as you get closer, you see that she's uh, smiling and sort of beckoning you to the side of the road, like like oh, she's scary. You. Oh, okay, that's not good. Yeah, on second thought. See, I almost thought she was working with those witches. Like, it was a trap. Maybe this is another trap. Have your light source ready, Jarek. We'll you approach know, her. You know me, boss. It's always ready to go. Okay, Uncle so as you approach, slip a dagger out. Keep it in his as, hand. All right. As you approach, she lets out a clear, ringing laugh and a mocking clap. Oh, good show. As she says this, her appearance seems to melt away, yeah, leaving okay. her in the form of a tall, broad-shouldered man in red and gold finery. <gasps> Is it Strahd? He smirks at you as he lowers his hands from the clap and gives a flourishing bow. I thought at time I introduced myself, Count Strahd von Zarevich, Master of the Realm of Barovia. He rises and meets you with a piercing gaze. Oh, excellent. It was Wait. good to, to see a touring fan. What? <laughs> it was. He's in our show. Um, Kelthris is looking very serious at this point. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm serious and very... Like, again, I, I suspected something was wrong with her, but... This is very confusing and... <laughs> not good. How are the... Are, are companions... Oh, yeah. ...reacting? Eastmark has immediately uh, shut down the carriage. He shut the door and uh, he's and the, the window, um, the shutters, uh, to try and close down the carriage. And uh, he's inside, you can only assume, in an attempt to protect his sister. Why is it that you show your face now, Count? As he uh, narrows his eyes. You've been playing my game for long enough that I thought you had deserved a bit of praise for your efforts. What next do you, will you have us do before we can end your tyranny? He actually laughs at that. And he... Uh, he gestures the road towards Valaki and he says, I have no intention of stopping you from your current... And he glances at the carriage and says, Task. So you decide to sit here and mock us and taunt us along our way? In part. I also thought it worth considering, and I do wonder... Which of you will betray the others into my grasp? And he kind of sweeps his gaze from each of you to the next. Well, Kelthris looks back at Rook with an obvious glare. <laughs> Fairly certain the entire party does. Yeah, right. <laughs> even even Strahd nods. And he nods directly to Rook and says, You I see great opportunity for. And he gestures to Kaelin and says, This one is too proud, and to Kelthris, This one too intent on the path of the martyr. He gestures to Ponto and says, Perhaps, but you fight against your desire for power. And then he meets Charvik's eyes particularly, and he says, You would do quite nicely, but I think you will never have the metal to make your own path. Eh, it's too much work. What exactly are you offering? <laughs> he grins and you can see every jagged tooth and he says what do you desire well I'd like to get out of this spooky place for one I can arrange that it is only by my grant that the Vistani have the means to pass the mists I could give you that I could give you the riches of Barovia. 
I could give you eternal life. What's Which it, it, all mean your death. He's gonna wave a dismissive hand at uh, <laughs> Keltheris. Uh, exactly what is it you want in exchange? He looks at you all again and he says, We will discuss that another time. In the meantime, mull on my offer and I will speak to you another time. And then he sort of lifts his arms up and he yells, Children of the night, keep my new friends entertained, would you? And in the distance you hear a howl. Oh, great. More? All right. Before this fight, I just wanted to mention one thing, Rook. When have you ever seen an undead in a satisfying relationship? Let us fight. Okay. <laughs> so formal. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping my options open. As a large pack of wolves uh, materialize on on the road ahead, striding marks. Oh, their horses. And another ringing laugh goes as he turns to mist. Dang it. I'm not surprised by that, but still. <laughs> I mean, he's still right there. Oh, he just turned to mist. Yeah. He didn't, like, disappear. You can still see. Yeah. Hmm. He's just mist. That's quite a lot of wolves. Like Wolfpack. All right, he shoved Rook into the front. That was me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> if it's all the same, I'll still be on the back of the cart. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Move to wherever I just kind of touched you all out there. All right. Well, uh, Kelthris would have actually gotten out next to the horses to speak with uh, Stroud. I don't know where I would be. Here? The uh, fluffy gray thing right here is <clears throat> Strahd. The mist. If that was. Yeah. Well, Ponto's braver than I thought. Nicely done. I may be small, but I'm full of courage. And kick. Yay. <laughs> uh, when? Uh, there we go. Oh, I am, don't feel... <laughs> don't feel like fighting at all. Apparently neither do Strouds and Wolves. And Ponto is the first to react as the Wolves arrive. Pronto, Ponto. <coughs> oh boy. I'm surprised I haven't heard that one already. <laughs> Now we use light strike on number nine here. Stop it, computer. <clears throat> and let me double check this because it's um it's it's called a ranged spell attack. 
that you can use with the attack action. Okay, so at level 5 I get um, extra attack. So would I be able to use that twice? Well, if you can use it as your attack action, that is the attack action. But if you get two attack actions... Yeah, works kind of like a fighter. Yeah, yeah. it depends on whether you get an extra attack as your attack in your attack action or a separate attack action, oddly enough. Uh, it's the extra attack that the fighters get. So okay, so I, like you can I'd attack be... twice with one attack action, so I assume it would replace your whole action, not just the one attack. I think yeah. I'm interpreting that correctly. And then I'll hit with a second one, then. And one wolf has gone down. As Kelfer springs into action. Well... Kalthras is going to, uh, as a bonus action, bring out a, a spiritual weapon. And it's going to put it right next to this wolf here. And then it's going to strike. made it in an axe so it'd be easy to draw. I like it. <laughs> this spiritual weapon sticks the uh, the snarling wolf. Alright. Um, that, I think that takes my turn. Use the weapon up to 20 feet attack the creature. And then the next time it attacks on my bonus action. So I think that's it for this turn. As a wolf lets out a yell, what rook is the next to respond? Rook will point a dagger at the mist and say, You suck at negotiation! And he's going to draw his other dagger, slide up uh, behind Kelthus, uh, and then I would like to uh, ready an action for if a wolf uh, comes within five feet of uh, Kelthus, that I will spring out and stab at it. All right, easily done as the rest of the wolves prepare their and unfortunately the only one they can reach is Ponto so they're gonna I ain't scared <coughs> I ain't scared <laughs> we fought scarecrows and undead beings wolves are no match for us and these are just wolves, right? They're not... Uh, yeah. Like as as far as they're just wolves. Just wolves, she says, as they take right, up yeah. five feet tall spaces. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> wolves are pretty big. It's the attitude that takes up the whole square. Thank you. (laughs) 
Did you roll your save? Oh, never mind, you didn't get hit. <laughs> and let's see okay. if Charvik can resist. My money's on no, and uh, Charvik, Charvik is the next to react. Herr Kent, you liked our show, right? Let's see some magic. I call this boom. <laughs> is that your new fire? Something? Jeez! Just keeps growing. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh boy. As Charvik uh, rolls his, his hands around in front of his chest like he's sculpting a sphere or a ball, and then he lets loose as just a small, tiny, fiery pebble arcs through the air to land amidst the wolves and it erupts in a huge ball of flame. Fireball. Rook will give a startled yelp. <laughs> I might pass the fiery torch on to Charvik then. Some of the wolves are to in avoiding the, the bulk of the flames, but even those ones hard enough that they succumb to the fireball. The Count Stays there and lets us kill him. Campaign over. <laughs> that, would be really easy. that would be so sad, actually. <laughs> it's the reason you rarely introduce your characters to the big bad early. Yeah. So you can assume they will try to kill it. You you won D and D. Yeah. Yeah. Strad's counting on that, though. He's kind of a special D and D villain. I was reading him today. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Don't want to reveal too much. <laughs> the Count makes the uh, <clears throat> makes the save, and he... Uh, A little bit of wispy <clears throat> smoke gets mixed in with his mist. Exactly. He's going to be very angry if you uh, have impacted his favorite cape at all. You just get that sense. And, uh... No. Oh yeah. Um. So in the red. Oh, is, I was gonna say the red. The, the red square is gone. It's an instantaneous. Yes. Well, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna moonbeam. The. Uh, the mist that is Strahd. <laughs> See what happens. I bet he avoids it, but I'm curious. Oh god, you're gonna make me actually roll a freaking save again. <laughs> I just had to look up one. He's a shape changer, isn't he? Yeah, that's why. Oh, well, that's right. One, yeah, I think he is. so. Yeah, he's tagged as a shape changer. So he automatically fails or gets disadvantage? Yeah, he gets disadvantage. He's disadvantage. The beautiful thing is that is radiant energy. I know, that's why I'm doing it. Trying to make friends and influence people. Mm-hmm. I ain't scared no vampire. <laughs> That's the attitude to have. We got this. Fair, he's literally dead, so you can't expect great con. 
What? So yeah, I wasn't sure because what, will his constitution be high because he maybe has something magical happening? I don't know how D and D handles it, but it's been a long tradition of undead's con scores is actually their charisma score. Oh really? Like, because they're not alive, they can't have a constitution. So. Mm-hmm. It's more the presentation constitution than actual constitution. Yeah. Force of will to survive. So um, I don't know if the mist is like a spell or something, but yeah, since he failed, he's supposed to revert, revert to his original form. <clears throat> but I don't know what that means for him. <laughs> yes, he would uh, then revert to his I think that's his natural form. Yeah, his human appearance. Um, and you are getting a very dirty look from a very angry, very powerful vampire. <laughs> yeah, no. as, uh, as he takes his turn, he, um, this time chooses the form of a bat. Very small bat. Do... No, I can't yeah. be a bat yet. I'm gonna try to seduce him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to the great <laughs> bat dance. I turn into an even sexier bat. Yeah. <laughs> bat with like a bikini. And that's how we wrecked a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the creepy eerie feel. <laughs> you gotta I have still... that those comedic <laughs> breaks, right? <laughs> I still like the idea of just ruining Barovia, so then like he doesn't want to live there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Burning the whole place to the ground. Yeah, just basically. <laughs> I mean bats and bikinis would definitely be a start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to live there. <laughs> I think you got it. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Drad, uh... He's actually... Like, off the edge at this point. He, uh... Ooh, uh fl flies off. Um... Do you choose to give chase? Tonto. I think I have to deal with what's in front of me first. Yeah. Um, so I will. All, 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 all the wolves are dead. Yeah, these are all dead. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, th I thought Tarvik took them all out. They're, they're pretty sure crispy. That. Sweet. Uh, did we want to run after them? Run after him? Uh, I don't know what. I don't know. I, mean, I feel like flight speed might be a little bit more than what I can handle, even. That's true. <laughs> I ain't about to get bounding off into the dark. Let's stay together. I'm very upset by this because I wouldn't let him get away, but I might concede. Unless you're planning but, on sprouting wings and giving chase to the vampire lord of Barovia. Well, I'm just going to continue following him with my moonbeam, you know, run under him and chase him down with my... <laughs> keep making him change out of his changed form, and just keep seeing how many of these magic tricks he's got going on. <laughs> yes, he's a good plan. Chase the vampire lord with flashlight. <laughs> ah, if this is the best he could do against us, then I think we've got this in the bag. He's gonna twirl his dagger fancily and slide it back into its sheath. Did you do anything? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's, uh, let's get these two back to Velaki, shall we? Oh, that's true. That is... I guess that is our task at hand. I kind of forgot about them and got wrapped up in killing a vampire. <laughs> as, as everyone's getting back on the 
on the wagon and cart, you just see Charvik there leaning casually with, against the back of the cart with his uh, two hands folded behind his head. <laughs> Gazing Proud upon himself. his good he's, works. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's Mark does not uh, immediately open the door. He does take some convincing. But once you assure him that the vampire is gone, he'll fire it. You see. Yeah, it's almost a shame. Could use new pelt coke. <laughs> and you are free to continue along the old Fallage Road to the village of Velaki. Alright, we'll ride over the crispy uh, wolves along the road. And you're not going to keep them for breakfast? What's wrong with you? <laughs> as soon as, the, sin, as, soon right? as the wagon wheels make contact with them, they just disintegrate into dust. I was going to say, they're probably a little too well done to be delicious. Can we move it ourselves, or...? Oh, oh yeah. 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 It should be set up for all of you. <laughs> right. Um, moving at a relatively moderate p- pace in... Uh, keeping our eyes out. When you get about there, the old solid road meanders into a valley watched over by dark, brooding mountains to the north and south. The woods recede, revealing a sullen mountain berg surrounded by a wooden palisade. Thick fog presses up against this wall as though looking for a way inside, hoping to catch the town of slumber. The dirt road ends at a set of sturdy iron gates with a pair of shadowy figures standing behind them. And in the road outside the gates are a half dozen pikes with wolves' heads impaled upon them. That's not foreboding at all. Right? Undaunted, we'll continue. Well, we're not wolves. I'm sure we'll be fine. Besides, it looks like they can use some cheering up. Maybe we put on a show. <laughs> Dancing bear might go over well. Fine point. <laughs> the iron gates to you the You can also town. be a dancing crocodile now, just so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to get you an alarm clock to hang around your neck so you can go tick tock, tick tock. That'll be good. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, that's the important question is whether the dancing crocodile wears a bikini. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, Strahd has clothes. no chance. Yeah. <laughs> and, We're done, uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Just you guys keep making me laugh every time I'm trying to like get into my spiel here. <laughs> um, two town guards are on the other side of the gate carrying long pikes. They do not uh, immediately open the door, but, or the gate, but instead ask you to state your name and your business. I am Galfris. This is my assembled um, group here. We are carrying uh, two refugees. Um, we have Ismark and Isana. She is in dire need of assistance. Uh, one of the guards seems to soften a little at the mention that you have someone who needs help, <coughs> and uh, she, he asks you, what sort of assistance? She has been bitten by the prince. Rex is going to shake his head. <laughs> You'll be wanting to take her over to St. Andrew's Church, then. It's the only safe place for him in all of Barovia. Thank you for your kindness. And what is that? If you keep on this road, 
you keep on this road all the way through town, you'll see the church nearly to the opposite gate. Oh. oh. Kind of indicates, you know, you can see it rising above, and he kind of indicates where it is. And he, uh, this particular guard opens the gate for you, while the other guard is sort of giving him a, not necessarily a dirty look, but a, a hesitant look. Do we um, kind of half bow and um, nod and walk in? The hell contrasts. What color contrasts with this map? <laughs> Red. No color contrast with this map. I have had no uh, orange. Oh. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I play. I played with the the indicator. It just. It, this map is... Yeah, what I do is I just make a white box and then put the letters over it. Yeah. Yeah, but that's Sorry. because you're smarter than I am. <laughs> What's the mood in town as we ride through? Is it, like, bustling, or is it... It is, um... It's very strange compared to the rest of Barovia that you've seen. Um, there are hanging um, like decorations on you know all of the, the lamps and um, of the buildings and such um, <clears throat> still left over from what you can only assume would be a festival and um, there is an air of um, sort of a, sort of a dichotomy many of the villagers that you see have an almost jovial look to them and the others have an even more downtrodden appearance than uh, those in the village of Barovia. Hey boss, what do you make of this? It's strange to see such uh, contrast. It's difficult until we get to speak with someone to make sense of any of this. Perhaps those at the church might have a bit more to say about the state of affairs in this part of the uh, the area. Uh, I'll leave it up to you. I don't think they'll be too interested in talking to the likes of me. Yeah, a little too devilly, eh? This slouching centuries-old stone church has a bulging steeple in the back and walls lined with cracked stained glass windows depicting pious saints. A fence of wrought iron encloses a garden of gravestones next to the church. A thin mist creeps among the graves. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get out and uh, try to help our. Uh, our passengers to the door and we'll not we'll rap on the door a few times. East Mark is having to mostly carry Irina at this point. And uh, the door to the church is opened by a gaunt older man in priest vestments. Good blessings to you, Father. He says, asks questioningly. Uh, he nods and introduces himself. I am Father Lucian Petrovich, and you I do not recognize. But you have the look of a holy man. I am uh, actually looking for my last name. Here we go. All right. I am Kelthra Septalis. <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet you. Please welcome me and my uh, my group here. We wish to uh, gain aid for our two travelers here, as he points to um, the brother and sister. 
Alright, with a glance at Irina, Father Lucian seems to understand why you've come, and he gestures to an orphan altar boy beside him, and uh, tells him to quickly fetch water as he uh, opens the door the rest of the way, and beckons you into the church. We appreciate your hospitality. And, uh, Kelthris kind of just takes a look around. He's not not trying to do most of the talking here. He's more in tune with just listening as much as he can and just uh, getting a, a feel or of the vibe. All right. Um, so, like, that there are... oh. so, like, we was told this place would be safe from uh, you-know-who. A, a briefly worried look crosses Father Lucian's face. He uh, glances around and he gestures to several townsfolk in the pews and he says, Many come here to find sanctuary from the, uh, from the count. And, uh, do they? He looks at each of you, and then he looks at Eastmark, uh, cradling his sister, and says, uh, Perhaps we should uh, have a conversation in uh, my office area. Do lead us to your office area. We'd be happy to talk. Uh, he beckons you all, but he leaves Eastmark and uh, Irina in the hands of Yeska, the other boy, uh, offering them, um, you know, water and whatever they may need to get Irina settled in. And he leads you to a cluttered office in the back uh, of the church. And he kind of folds his arms and leans against the table that serves as a desk, and he says, until very recently, yes, this church was an absolute sanctuary from Strad. He could not cross our door no matter what. However, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was uh, he was denied access by the bones of St. Andrew, who this church is named after. Uh, not long ago, those bones went missing. And I fear that our church is now at risk. And what is putting us at risk, eh? The absence of the bones, which were previously uh, the, the saints granted the saints protection on the building. I fear that without them, it may be that Strad can come in. And I have no idea who stole the bones. Someone broke into the crypt. The saint that the, the bones are of, did that saint happen to be someone that Strad at one point in his life looked up to? Perhaps Saint even Andrew. envied. Oh no, Saint Andrew died uh, centuries before Strad even came to this area. Ah. Well, we could ask around town, check out some of the uh, the more fun bars. Maybe someone around here has heard something. It's not a small town. I'm sure there's some uh, people like me. I don't know. I'd kind of like to think uh, maybe I should take a look at that uh, crypt. Those bones, they were buried here? Yes, the crypt below the church. As far as I know, only I had known of their 
existence for quite some time. But I do mention over a month ago, I mentioned them to uh, mention them to Yeska to put him at ease, so that he would know that he was truly safe here. Um, he looks at you and he says, "I don't. I don't believe that the timing is coincidence." He may, uh, he would never have taken them, but he may know who did. He will not, however, divulge it to me. And he looks quite put out that his uh, is simply not willing to answer the question. Would you mind if we have a short talk with him? Absolutely. He should be in the in the main area, tending to the refugees you've brought us. And he leads you out. And do you have a small office or a room that we could talk to him privately? I don't think your uh, your followers here would appreciate this. Questioning him in the middle of the chapel. Excellent idea. I will bring him in here if if this is suitable. Tarvik leans over to, to Calthris. That way, if we need to rough him up, we can. <laughs> we'll just keep the door closed. As I realize I'm now going to hell because I just suggested roughing up the priest in the church. And I'm thankful I didn't choose a good alignment. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's not your that gods. That's hard to have, I think, in this campaign. <laughs> the church is not your gods. <laughs> It's, it's the not even the priest. It is the priest's orphaned altar boy assistant. I mean, that's like he's a, he's a child, man. <laughs> Nobody will miss him. <laughs> eh, the priest, mate. They get Terrible. lonely too. Terrible. <laughs> if he's in Sorry. this module, he has been dead before, right? I mean, it's a recycled yeah. soul, right? Right. So. <laughs> no problem. Let's drag him in here. Huh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Father Lucian returns with, uh, with Yeska and closes the door. Uh, with you all. Uh, really, really breaking up there. Yeah. Uh, apologies, I was getting texts and my phone apparently can't do two things at once. Um, he, uh, Father Lucian returns to Jessica and comes in and uh, closes the door with just the seven of you to hear. Jessica, about those bones. And then we want to gauge his facial expression at that mention. Alright, do you want to roll some insight? Absolutely. Tarvik is going to be uh, leaning against the door there, scowling at him with his... Uh, tiefling eyes and metal sharp teeth with a disturbing grin hoping to kind of unsettle him a little bit, loosen his tongue perhaps perhaps assist and allow uh, me to get advantage yeah um, I, I feel like, you know, he's never seen a tiefling before and you can tell that so uh, your presence and your efforts do get advantage so, Calvaris, you know instantly that his reaction, like, his, his, just, his expression is one of uh, dread and guilt. Rook's going to point to uh, Charvik and say, that's what happens when you lie. And now it's one of absolute abject terror. Uh, don't listen to him. I haven't eaten a child in weeks. <laughs> All is not lost. You can tell us. Tell us, child. Everything. He bursts out crying, and he says, 
No, Father Lucian only told me to make me feel better, and I just wanted Millicent better, so I told him. He broke up during the name. Told whom? He said Millie. Millie. He's got a crush. Father Lucian looks at him and he says, You told Millivaj about the saint's remains. And then he says to you, He's the, um, sort of a helper around here. He tends the grounds and digs the graves. Ah, he's grounds groundskeeper Millie. <laughs> Lucian smirks very slightly and he says, Millie Vaj, only ask a call to Millie. And he pats the boy on the head. So the m most obvious direction now is to find this milliage. Can you help us? Should be on the ground, either tending the grave site or uh, the lawn. And he wants you to adore at the back of the church. What does he look like? A tall, brawny lad, young, maybe 18 at the most. He will likely be the only one out there. Hmm. Well, Father Lucian, we are here to help. So, do not fear. Looking over to the the young the younger boy, Charvik just comments that, ah, oh, perhaps I should go visit this uh, this groundskeeper, eh? Oh, look, it's time for lunch too. How convenient. I guess you uh, you get off this time, kid. Yeah, he cries a little bit less at that. Yeah, again, there's always room for dessert. I'll roll my eyes and say, don't listen to him. His bark is worth is worse than his bite. Unless the bark is on fire. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> to Miliage. Father, Father Lucian goes about, uh, you know, patting Yeska on the head as he shows you guys the direction into the door. And, uh, if you, it, it. So we all file out. So, yeah. Right, sorry. Um, and uh, as you arrive in the yard beyond the church, you do find a young man just as the, uh, the father described him with a shovel on his shoulder uh, walking across the yard towards somewhere. A fine day, Mr. Milliage. Might we have a word? Furrow is his brow and looks at you skeptically and says, oh, What do you need? We need the bones. And he looks at him with a knowing look. He squints at you a little and says, What bones? You know. The ones that Yeska told you about. While well, he's talking to him, uh, Rook's going to try to subtly sort of sneak around in case he tries to bolt like the opposite direction. All right. 
right. Uh, do you want to roll? Um, I guess intimidation would be. Um, I'm going to uh, to just glance over at Trivik and say um, <laughs> he's pretty intimidating. <laughs> So while while Kelthris is talking to the groundskeeper, I imagine they're kind of standing probably like a foot or two between each other. Maybe three or four, whatever. They're talking to each other. Charvik is going to be, just as um, Rook is working his way around behind to, to head off any escapes, uh, Charvik is just walking right up to the gardener and, you know, casually picking at his collar and, and his, his sleeve and just leaning over his shoulder from behind with a big wide grin. Perhaps it is uh, good if you stay to chat a while. It can be very convincing. Yeah, he uh, comes up completely and then he says, All right, all right. I shouldn't have, but I told um, Vanderwart about them when he paid me good money to take for him. And I got younger to be. Of course I was willing to do it. I think your internet connection has joined the ranks of the undead. <laughs> I got the most of it, though. Just, uh, what was the, the name that he gave us? Vanderhart? is completely uh, tensed up and terrified at this point and he says I don't know what he did with them I don't know what he wanted all I know is he paid me good well, you've sold out your friends their safety lied in those bones tell us, wh tell us where this Mr. Vandervoort is and we shall atone for your sins He grunts just a little, and then he says, "He, he runs the coffee shop. We're in the half town. If you go down in the main square, you'll see the shop." Perhaps it, it would be uh, in your wise and generous nature. To make a significant donation to the church, uh, perhaps the assumed value of a couple bonds. That'd be a good idea, yes. He frowns and he says, "I can't. I bought food and clothes for my younger siblings. I have nothing left." Mm Well, perhaps you can just work a little extra to make up once Father Lucian and Yeska find out. Since you he did nods. come up with the name. He nods and agrees with you. If that seems fair. Now, what would be fair is if we took your bones and replaced them in the tomb instead, but you get off easy today. Kelthrus is a nice guy. The rest of us, but I cannot, not always. I cannot always keep my friends in check. This Charvik clacks his metallic jaws. He glances aside at you, and all of a sudden, he just makes a break to run into the church, yelling, Father Lucian, I'm sorry! Mm 
Ah, it's good to put fear of God into someone. <laughs> or fear of getting eaten. <laughs> eh, close enough. Alright, to the coffin shop. Hopefully they have free Wi-Fi. Or is it Weefy? Could be. I've heard it pronounced both ways, I don't know. I would... why? <laughs> I'm an IT guy, that just makes my soul hurt <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, I, but I have heard it pronounced that way, and it... it Hopefully, it ironically. It well, was, well, it was sorority girls at a Panera Bread that they had a sign up that said free Wi-Fi, and one of the girls said, uh, What's Weefy? And the yeah. other one said, what do you mean? And she says, it says they're giving away free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, That's I don't know. Cool. I don't know if they were being ironic and joking with each other since we didn't know them or if they... A bunch of sorority girls in Panera Bread, I'm... they're not joking. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, don't th I don't think so. I don't feel like that's really the crowd to get, like, the whole ironic humor thing. Yeah. Mm hmm that's, Like, I feel bad for them. I know. Like, I someone needs to... for their teachers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you feel bad for both. True. All right. The, uh, coffin shop is right here, if... So far away. <laughs> you walked past it to get to the church. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad city planning. Rook will complain about his feet hurting as we walk over there. Don't we... Oh, did we not bring the cart with us when we uh, walk... There? I don't know. Well, the, <laughs> I like the purpose of the... Stays with Rook yeah. And I I see, yeah, that's... Yeah. I, as I said it, I realized oh, we probably he left would, it. Yeah. He would just find something else to complain about. The bumpy road or yes. that the horses stink or something. <laughs> Oh, we could always find you a good bed and a nice pine box if you're really that tired. Not exactly how I was planning to get out of here. Well, keep walking. We are in the market for a new box, actually. It's true, the last one it didn't work out so much. The lock got stuck. <laughs> Alright, as you find the shop, this uninviting shop is two stories tall and has a sign shaped like a coffin above the door. All of the window shutters are closed up tight, and a deathly silence surrounds the establishment. A deathly silence, really? I got that. <laughs> it's like the silence of the grave in here. <laughs> Did someone die or what? <laughs> They're dying to get in here. Oh boy. <laughs> Your drugs, they kill me. <clears throat> Thus proving it is impossible to have a genuinely serious D and D game. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the music playing and everything, it's I right. anyway, wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> yeah, that joke's dead. All right, so we go inside. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. What are the, the surroundings like? Are there people milling around, or is this like no one's here, or business is dead, or booming?
Uh, you don't see anybody in the, uh... The immediate vicinity? In the building, or in the vicinity. Hello, hello. Did we knock, or just enter? If it's open, we just entered. I mean, it's a place of business, I That's fair, yeah. Uh, this workshop contains everything a carpenter needs to make coffins and furniture. Three sturdy work tables stretch the length of the west wall. No, you don't see offhand anybody in here. Hmm. All right. I did call out, though, just in case there's any sound coming from this floor or the next. All right. As you call out, you'll hear some uh, people in the uh, next. Uh, oh, I forgot to put you guys on the map. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. That just, so you, just <laughs> um, so you know, that's something we can do ourselves. So. Okay. Yeah, I should let you guys do it as forth then. Um. You hear. Um. You know, some movement from the room to the right of the door and a, uh, a man comes uh, tall and broad-shouldered with a thick gray beard. He emerges from this door right by the front door. Can I help you? We're looking for a Mr. Vandervoort. Uh, we're closed. You should go away. What time of day is it? Uh, mid afternoon. <laughs> well, they're having that right. conversation. Rook's going to slink around the side of the building and the other. I think this is another door. Yes. He'll give it a test to see if it's locked. Uh, it is locked. If you want to examine it, you'll find that it's uh, not an especially good lock, though. He's going to wait a beat or two. Just kind of standing there nonchalantly looking around, see if anybody's watching. It's a bit early to be closing up shop, no? The shopkeeper grunts and tells you, We had a big order. We're booked for a while. And, uh. Big order. Well, just what happens. We come from the church, and, well, we have a few things to discuss. It might involve that order. Well, I can't help you. Go away. We cannot leave until we speak with Mr. Vandervoort. Can you help us or not? holds his uh, arms over his chest and says, I am Henrik Vandervoort, and I'm telling you to get out of my shop. Rook will pick the lock. <laughs> <laughs> it really opens. He's just going to open it enough that he can kind of peek in and see what's... Uh-oh. Um, years of <laughs> years of D and D have trained me to be very afraid of a room of coffins. I, I know, right? <laughs> He's going to sneak in, or not? Trip over a coffin. 
Into one. <laughs> what do you think, Buzz? Do we make a point of it? Well, there has been... There's been evidence that you have purchased bones that should belong to the church. We're here to investigate and set things straight. He narrows his eyes and says, Evidence, huh? That is right. We have a bone to pick with you. He gives you a blank look that suggests he does not appreciate your humor. What humor? You know the groundskeeper, Miliavam Bovalovich. As he gets that name completely incorrect. I know no one by that name. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, groundskeeper Millie. Oh, guys, my mouse just freaked out and spawned a wolf, so now you have to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. I was like, crap. <laughs> He's got a dog. That, um, that's, what, that's what happens when you have ace macros on your mouse. <laughs> Is this door open or closed? The one that goes into the area where they are? Yeah. It is closed, but it is not locked. I can tell when a man's lying. And you are, sir. Rook will try to creep that door open. Hmm. And if the shopkeeper doesn't notice, he's gonna slink up behind him and put his dagger in the small of his back and whisper to him, I think you should start talking. Otherwise, I might slip. I've been a bit clumsy today. Eh, yeah, you told the last few days, <laughs> but yes. I think you got the point. <clears throat> He completely freezes and his eyes go wide and he looks utterly terrified. Make no bones about it. He will kill you. I think I'm just sitting in the corner, like permanently face palmed, like. <laughs> oh, Honestly, boys. I feel like it makes you a saint that it's taken you this long to go perma face palm. I know. That's a, yeah. The shopkeeper starts yelping. All right, all right. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's Von Holtz. It's Von Holtz. Another piece of the puzzle falls astray. Tell us where this Van Holt is. I don't know. All I know is a few months ago, he came to me. And he asked me, uh, he offered me good business in exchange for my help. Okay? Now, I've got these crates upstairs. Well, I don't know what's in them, but it sounds like it's moving. And he asked me to steal these bones. And I have these bones stolen, and they're up there with the crates that are moving. Who else is here with you? I heard you talking to someone. Only you, only you all. And he looks very alarmed at that. Nah, there's someone else here you was talking to when we came in. Mm -hmm. 
give the dagger a little twist. So he feels the point. He, he whimpers and shakes his head rapidly and says, No, no there isn't. We did hear him talking to somebody, right? Or other voices when we came in? Uh, no. All you heard oh. was like, uh, movement and like a chair on the floor and stuff. Just me. Oh, okay. I thought you said there was chatter. Well, we're going to collect those bones now. Are you going to make it easy for us? Or are you going to stand aside? He points you back to the door that Rook came through. He says, through there, to the right, up the stairs. But, uh, they're, they're in the same room as, as them as them crates, and I leave you to deal with that, because I'm not going there. I'm not gonna deal with whatever's there and with Van Holt. If he asks, you robbed me. And if, I find, Go ahead. and if I find out you're lying, we're gonna do a lot worse than Rob. Yeah, you got it. And he's gonna shove him, shove him forward towards Kelthus. Kelthus will stop him with his uh, staff, right at his neck. Oof! You do what? Just clotheslined him, basically. Oh. Charvik turns to to Kalen behind him and and asks with a shrug, "Just how stupid are these Barovians?" I don't. They, he wants a coffin like, shop. He yeah. Agrees to sell bones to guy and has moving crates in store. What is he stupid? Yeah, and I'm gonna look to him and say, "Why would you ever do business with a stranger like this?" I mean, if it is water deep, is one thing, but. Barovia. <laughs> he, he shrugged and said, "What do you expect?" Needed the money. I'm gonna sort of say, I mean, out loud, but to myself, like, uh, say, uh, "Wow, people here are just so sad. They'll do anything for a buck. Risk their safety, yes. or their loved ones' safety." Or are there immortal souls? <sighs> Let's see about those moving crates, shall we? Uh, Buzz, you think we should tie him up first? He might have uses. Sure. If nothing else, he's large enough to be good human shield. <laughs> Send him in first. Well, no need to torture the man. Oh. I mean, so far he has been cooperative. And Trevor just responds, uh, "Yes, boss." For one of my fun. But Trevor will tie him up in the corner so he doesn't just bolt. There might be more information needed afterwards. Alright. Ponto, would you like to scout ahead? Sure. <laughs> That's the enthusiasm I was looking for. Was <laughs> you seem so brave Do with the wolves. I think he just assumed you'd be brave with coffins. Yeah, hopefully we can handle them one at a time. <clears throat> well, in the worst case, we could always burn the building down. <laughs> yes, that works for us in the past, hasn't it? The poor shopkeeper is probably thinking, what? <laughs> That's a good yeah, way to he... make an entrance to this town, <laughs> is to burn down a business. Yeah, better than orphanage. <laughs> we're here. We're, we're here to save you guys. We promise. As <laughs> this whole town burns to the ground. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. You burn down one orphanage, and the whole town is after you. It's ridiculous. We could burn the coffin shop down, and then get our kickback from the crematorium. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Extra points if they have non dairy creamer. <laughs> oh boy. Um so we go into this room or we gotta uh, or we gotta go upstairs. I heard something about an upstairs. He said right. stairs to the right. Yeah, that's where the bones are. So hopefully the nothing pops out of these coffins and we can just walk right past them. Yeah, yeah if you come over you to here in this to room it. you can go up the stairs. I know. Just had to <laughs> say it. Knock on wood quick. I don't want Are things you? knocking on wood. Knocking on wood's bad here. Especially <laughs> if it's from the inside. <laughs> Are these doors unlocked? Or this first door? Uh, yes. That is unlocked. Okay. I've been there somewhere. Huh. I'm in there somewhere. Oh, I just moved you, Rook. I'm sorry. No. I thought I was already inside. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm not in the coffin room. Thank you. Um, I will swing oh. open... The, uh, I will half open this first door to take a look inside. As promised, it is nothing more than a staircase. Um... I will start to go up as, as I do it what's uh, the is that another door at the top I think that's just a scene transition marker okay yeah it comes over to here so at the top what you see see our um, two doors on either side of a small landing. Brooke's going to open this other door if he can and peek in. I'm still on the stairs. I'm just moving my token over here for uh, visibility purposes. Rook, this is a room with a table and uh, four chairs with um, two well-made cabinets against the east wall. Uh, as the others slink up the stairs, he's going to slip into that room and check out those cabinets. See if there's anything valuable or interesting in them. They're packed, but nothing in them seems particularly valuable. You have, like, spools of string and um, other random objects that Henrik has collected over the years. Okay. He'll uh, look disappointed and slip up the, slink up the stairs. Right. So which one are we going to try first? Your choice? Well, left is always right, so if I'm coming up the stairs, I guess it would be this side. Are we hearing any movement from any particular direction up here? Nothing at all at the moment. I will open the door this way, as you can see. This kitchen contains a square table surrounded by chairs and shelves of provisions. Uh, let's continue to this door. And 
and I will open that one. I was muted. This modest bedchamber holds a cot and several well-made pieces of furniture, including a table, a padded chair, a bookshelf, and a wardrobe. Is there any interest of looking through this, guys? Or do we want to keep going around? Just to ransack someone's bedroom? Of course! He's just a simple businessman in this town. I don't. Who's making but... deals with people who want to buy bonds? Happy has invoice. <laughs> yeah, that's something. Well, it might be considered ordinary paperwork for a man of his business. Um, I'm gonna put like my, my ear to the store and see if I hear anything coming from there. I have a suspicion that might be where they are. Oh, you hear absolute nothing. No. Just a stunning stillness from the other side of the door. Hmm. <clears throat> well, should we give this this one a try? This store a try? That's, uh... Where I was coming back to. <laughs> did you guys ruffle through anything in the bedroom? Or did you leave it alone? We're ruffling through. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. He cooperated. No I know. Or investigation. <laughs> this is just the master bedroom where Henrik sleeps at night. The bookshelf contains a handful of storybooks and carpenter's manual. You can tell that they're old and have probably been handed down by generations. The wardrobe in the southeast corner. Uh, delay perception check, whoever's checking on that. <laughs> I believe that was yeah. Rook with his 18. Uh -huh. No, it's investigation, yeah. Oh, that's what you usually use for searching. Yeah. I get it. Well, it's 18, so it's okay. Are you gonna roll perception? Oh, I can't do that, too. Oh. I thought that's what she said. I may have misheard. Yeah, I had uh, expected perception in order to <coughs> notice that the base is not the right height for where the floor is <gasps> suggest the possibility of a compartment I'll use investigate my investigation roll to check that out <laughs> you are able to find a section of the bottom that you can lift up and inside Sneaky. And inside lie two large sacks. He'll inspect one of them. Uh, the larger or smaller of the two? Oh, uh, larger, of course. <laughs> <laughs> As you open it, you find the bones of St. Andrew. Got him! He's going to say, holding up a bag of bones, and then he'll take. As he holds up that other one, he'll take the smaller one and uh, slide it into his belt pouch sneakily. Wait, didn't Is he say the rolling? bones were also in a room with moving crates? Yes, he said the bones were upstairs. Uh, in the room with the crates. So maybe you just have 
Well, she lied. Bones, well, fair. Did Calthris see Rook put that in his uh, bump pouch? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. As he, as he uh, places his hand on Rook's shoulder, nicely done. Nicely done. Finding both of those. Can we? I don't. Is there any way for us to know for sure if those are the bones, or if they were just a set of bones? <laughs> um. Do, do, do you can, I guess. Different? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm sure they don't. That's I don't. I don't know if well, there's any like in like game mechanic. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can use nature to see if you can tell how old the bones are. I'll do that. I'll walk over, because I have, I mean, they were hidden, but, man, I kind of sort of trusted this guy. I thought he was finally coming clean, so I want to look at those bones. Roll them bones. Yeah. <laughs> they are very, very old. Centuries. Finders of Wow. Yeah. I uh, think you might be right, Rook. Good job. And I'll, like, pat him on the shoulder. That's what you pay me for. <laughs> He's going to say. We pay you. He's going to look to Kelthris and wink. <laughs> um, Kelthris does a slight nod in knowing. So what is uh, this talk about boxes? <laughs> want to check it out or uh, go our way? We Most go, likely it's a trap that that's been set up. And if he would like to trap us, perhaps we can lock him up in the room that he would have us trapped in. Ah, I knew I followed you for a reason, boss. Let me go get him. Well, let's before we throw him in there. Let's ask him what's he doing with hiding bones <laughs> in a in in this little hiding nook. What play all like the cards? He doesn't need to know we found him. True. That's yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea. All right, if we're going to uh, continue that ruse, let's uh, put everything back the way we found it. Um, at least cover of it. Keep the bones, of course. Look, we'll reset the compartment to make it look like how we discovered it. All right, easily done. Should I go get them or no? Oh, I think well for ready. Yeah, Caitlin, did you want to question him? Well, <clears throat> I mean, it might be better to uh, to not play all our cards. So perhaps we can just ask him if he can point us in the direction of the bones and see what he has to say. Well, he already did, and he pointed us to the moving crates, so I think that's a trap. So, let's trap him. I'm for that. Looks going to say, Okay, uh, guys, I apologize. I need, like, three minutes. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> Rook's going to suggest that we make him open the door. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, maybe we could say, uh... Can you just point where in the room? No, I think we just bring him up and tell him to open that door first. Open, yeah, open the door and but trick the trickster. Yeah, he's he's not going to want to go anywhere near that room. So we're going to be kind of carrying him up most likely. Oh, Mr. Shopkeeper. 
I'm coming for you. Maybe we could ask him more about this supposed uh Van Holt that supposedly Yeah, we do need to, do to find out where he is. Yeah. So maybe before we trap him, we we do investigate him, but along those lines, figure out. Because maybe this is a another situation where, or maybe that this is that's another trap. Like, oh, it wasn't me; it was Van Holt. <laughs> That and I am a bit curious what's making those boxes move. I am as well. I'm having flashbacks to one of the Acquisition Inc.'s live games. Where uh, they had crates filled with hamburger delivered. I remember that one. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> well, it's Necromancer. It's hamburger. Say hello to you, new <laughs> undead minotaurs. <laughs> Oh, that's that was funny. All right, so what did we decide? We decided we want hamburgers. I was gonna say um, we decided for burgers and beer. <laughs> I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> getting the shopkeeper, bringing him up to the door, and hey, you want? Well, to we're gonna. It? Do we want to question him about Van Holt first before we toss him in there? Probably a good idea. Or do you think he'll be more likely to talk after? <laughs> That's what makes it alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe uh, that will be his uh, the way we make him talk. Char Open the door, put him in a bit. Yeah, Charvik will uh, haul him up the stairs. <clears throat> He's still tied up, so there's only so much of a struggle he can put up. And uh, bring him to the door and uh, whisper in his ears. Now, if there's anything else that you'd like to volunteer about Mr. Van Holt, now would be a good time. Or should I Is just he, go uh, ahead and open the door? What, was he gagged when you dragged him up the stairs, or was he able to... No, it was just tied. Okay. Keep, keep him from He's like, no, no, way. what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, uh, after you ask him about Van Holt, he says, look, all I know, and he's like on the verge of a panic here, is that this man, Vasily Van Holtz, tells me he'll give me his business, and he's coming back in three days during the feast of St. Andrew for his things. Ah, oh, now you see, that was helpful. Come back, come back to to your shop here. Yes, I'm assuming. To pick up his things. And what well, exactly yeah. are his things? The crates. That's exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. The bones. Yeah. yeah, what? The bones and his crates. Yeah, his crates. It said they were supplies. Right, and the bones are in there with the boxes. You said. Yes. Or maybe well, then, we should go in and get them. Right, why don't you open the door for us? One person alone says, please don't make me the box of the crates. I, I don't know what's in there. Well, if you stored them up here next to your bed chambers, they can't be too bad. Mm -hmm. Go in, make some new friends. He points to a very solid steel latch on this side of that door. Hi. Check his pockets for the key. Assuming it's locked. And not just it's, it's not really a key, it's a, a drop latch. Gotcha. Um. Charvik will methodically make a point of reaching for the latch with one hand... Uh, 
hooked under his arm. Make sure that he stays close. He is on the verge of tears uh, now, and he says, please don't make me, please don't make me. Um, I'll say, well, if you could just give us a little more advice as to where in the room the bones are. I mean, if you know they're, they're in sitting, there... They're sitting in a sack on top of one of the crates. Is there any hint of compulsion or like dazed eyes or like it's not really him that's telling us this? Uh, you don't get any impression that he's under any kind of charm, uh, nor do you get any impression that he's lying. Hmm. All right, then. Let's go and get them. And Charvik uh, lifts the latch and gives his rump a, a swift kick to push him into the room. He tumbles into the room, and now he actually is crying. Now he's what? Crying. Oh, crying. Crying. Like a big baby. Is the when you shoved him in? Did you like? Is, did you leave the door open? Oh yeah. You picture like just unlatching it and then kicking him through the door. So I'm gonna stand right in the doorway. Please do. And just view. I just want to see what I can view. Whoopsie. Nope. Not there. There. I don't know if you have a. That's that's GM Fogor. <laughs> ah, what the. Oh, look at that. That's fancy. I'm guessing these are all crates. Uh, those are actually mostly stacks of lumber, but the two uh, in the bottom corner are um, crates. And are they moving or doing any... Hopping? Any... <laughs> no, or nothing? <laughs> No, there is nothing remarkable about those particular crates. They're being very crate-like. Huh. Any noise from inside this room? Uh, there is a distant, almost very, very, very low rustling noise. So Charvik turns his head. Other end of the room, probably. Charvik yeah. turns his head and says, like, "Oh, look, he's not dead yet." And he walks in to see the rest of the room. I'm gonna. I don't, I don't know that uh, this guy might be bigger than me, so maybe I can't pick him up. But I'm gonna lean down and say, "Hey, you're fine. <laughs> Nothing's gotten you yet." And then, like sort of help him. He's still tied up, right? As as Charvik entered the room, he walked over the, his back. <laughs> as his his feet are tied and his hands are tied in front of him. Look, you're See, I mean, fine. I, yeah, I'm going to say you're, and I'm going to maybe help him up and like lean him maybe like against the wall, like <laughs> by the door. <laughs> if he's on the, if he's like on the ground. And after he, uh, I clings to you a little bit, uh, very appreciatively, as you kind of help him. And then I'm gonna, I guess, after I do that, sort of follow behind Charvik. I'm guessing we see no sign of a bag on top of any of these crates. 
No, there is no bag on top of any of the crates. So then I'll, I'll say to him, are you sure the bones are in a bag on top of one of these crates? Because I don't see one. He nods and he looks up and uh, you think he's going to gesture to a crate and then his eyes just snap completely wide open in shock. At the fact the bag of bones isn't there, I'm guessing. I was expecting something to pop out of the box, but yeah, I'm being optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Optimism in nope. Barovia is an endangered <laughs> species. Just at the absence of a crate or of a sack on top of the crates. <clears throat> so well, let's find out what's in these crates, shall we? I'm dying to find out. <laughs> you know, if I was looking to hide, like, bones and valuables and stuff, I might, like, put a secret compartment in my wardrobe. Let's see, is there, yeah, I want to know, can, do we see any reaction on his face to that? Well, yes, he squints at you almost, uh, irritably and suspiciously at that. Just saying, that's where I'd like, you know, hide something valuable if I didn't want anybody to find it. If you took my coin, I will alert the guard. He finally musters the ability to say. Oh, greed brings out a bit of courage in you, doesn't it? The guards will be coming into play soon enough. As you're incarcerated for your actions. These were holy relics. Now let us find them. He just you know, like, nods his head down toward his bonds and says, I can't stop you. So, what are supposed to be in these crates, do you know? He just what do you said normally supplies. store? Right. What kind of supplies? Von Holtz gave no indication. He said all he needed was a discreet place to store some things for the festival. Okay. As we pry open the closest crate right here in the corner. Do we encounter a demonic pop in the ja jack in the box? Oh. That one, he speaks up and says, That one's mine. No, oh, this poor guy. Um, maybe, maybe you should be more forthcoming. These, these crates are just a uh, little bit of, like, ag again, similar to the uh, cabinets below, just full of random junk. If this was my crate, I wouldn't be so quick to lay claim to its contents. This is crap! Mm. This is a punish punishable offense. This is hoarding. Hoarding crap is a punishable offense? It is fire hazard. Okay. <laughs> hey, good one, boss. We, might, we could use that if we need reason later. Next crate. Well, let's simplify this. We will continue to open all the crates on this floor until we find something of interest or nothing at all. This crate right here has uh, weapons and uh, six sets of weapons and uh, armor in hmm. it. Of, of different kinds. There is you know, there's a crossbow, a couple of staves, uh, six or seven daggers, 
Um, it looks like it could outfit an adventuring party. It's all mundane gear, but... Ah, can never have too much rope. Isn't that right, Mr. Big Guy? Rook will snag the crossbow and run and drown and see if there are any bolts for it. I imagine you'll probably also want to help yourself to some of those daggers for throwing around. Actually, good on daggers. Yeah, I can never have too many. <laughs> there are five packets of bolts. Um, Goodness. Yeah. Now, I'm very curious what Mr. Van Holt is doing with all these supplies. Is he mounting a uh, siege? We'll open up the rest of the crates. Well, which crate did you open next? That one by you, Kelpus? Uh In the bottom corner here? Or... Yep, this one. All right. We have a winner. Yay. Bing, 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 bing. He won a cubie doll. An undead cubie doll. What? Wrong button. <laughs> I was like, geez, what popped out of there? Because we are all screwed. <laughs> Run. It's like, yes, it was trapped with a finger of death. <laughs> and yes, that has happened. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, no. Bursting forth from the crate as you open it is a what, what you suspect was once a regular human, but now with pale skin and uh, a red tint <laughs> in the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Rook has left the room. What? No, you hear no. th 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 down the stairs. <laughs> he's he's got bones and money. He's good to go. I think he handed the bones to you because you wanted to look at them. Oh, that's right. I guess do I still have them? Oh, I suppose I do. It's a ferocious cat beast. <laughs> no. Watch yourself. You might uh you might attack. Oh, I, I didn't roll like shit for once. <laughs> Holy crap. I Wow, but she still managed to beat us all in the initiative order. Alright. So he's storing undead zombie women. What's that tell us about him? Ew. He's into some the dude needs stuff. to find a girl. No. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> he is lonely. Now, you don't know it's for him. Maybe he's just storing them like as a business opportunity for. <laughs> he's 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 a pimp of zombies. <laughs> That's not mine. It's uh, it belongs to a uh, friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just holding it. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know how that got in there. This uh. This particular Okay. So as the as the vampire bursts forth from the crate, she uh, lashes out with her long clawed hands, naturally at Pelphorus for disturbing her nap. Well, that was that was very rude. Just you know. It to does look fair. like she needs a little more free to sleep. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> um, and uh, I assume a twenty-three hits, Belgrades. Oh yeah, all day. And she, uh, instead of doing that eleven damage, opts to grapple you. And now she makes a bite attack. <laughs> Give me. Jeez. All right. So, does she have advantage? Uh, does you being grappled by her give her advantage? I don't think so. Grappled just means I can't move anywhere. Um. Grapple, grapple was hugely simplified in Five E. It just keeps you from okay. moving. That's all it does. Then so, she does not have advantage. Alright, then she would bite into uh, my armor, thankfully. That's gonna be a do to take. <laughs> yeah. But she's still got you between her and anyone else's efforts. Not that that will matter to Charvik. Charvik. Although if he fireballs her, he might accidentally get Kelthus as well. <laughs> and you. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, hi. <laughs> that's what I need. Oh boy. Little sprigs of garlic on the sides, too. Exactly, a little uh, holy water perfume. <laughs> Dab on each neck, yeah. You know. uh, don't worry, boss. I'll go, I'll save you. As everyone else is probably cringing, knowing well, full well his his uh, history with accuracy. Yeah, Quickly. and and his new his new spell that he just gained. Just She's now. a biter. Whoa. Those all apply. Yeah. So, I'm guessing two of those actually hit? Exactly. So, nine fire damage. She glares at you over Keltris' shoulder as uh, Scorching Rays uh, singe her. And Kaylin. Of course, now that it's my turn, I have a cat in my face. Um. Summon monster. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. I'm going to. Just produce flame. Don't you hit? <laughs> I would hope. Adding to the scorching. She bares her teeth and hisses in the direction of you both as the flame spark strikes her. Go for it. Alright. Uh, Kelthris is going to say into her eyes, I'm sorry. It's not you, it's me. And then he's going to hit her with this staff after uh, casting a shillelagh. Don't we usually hit them with the staff first and then apologize for not being used? <laughs> yeah, usually. Aww. I was just thinking that wouldn't even rank on my list of worst breakups. <laughs> <laughs> It does add a disadvantage, right? Or no, it doesn't, actually. All right. right. And to break grapple, I need to spend an action to do that, right? Yes. Okay. So I won't be doing that. Right. Rook. Uh, 
Uh, she. Wait, with where she is and the way she's got him grappled, can he scramble around to her? I can move zero when I'm restrained. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I Rook can. I mean, can oh, I clamber? You, you can I, yeah, can I clamber up on this stuff? Yeah, but uh, I would say it's probably difficult since it's a stack of lumber. Yeah. Listen. Could you use your new crossbow? <laughs> well, I, I would assume it wasn't loaded. Oh, you're, that's you're fair. Throwing knives. I do. I was just trying to get in so I could actually do a sneak attack. Sneak attack, yeah. You can that's sneak right. attack. That's right. So nice. You just uh, need someone yeah, adjacent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'll come up. Actually, I'll come up so I'm kind of can duck out from behind this crate here. And I will throw a knife at her. <clears throat> oh, I missed the attack. You probably want to get just a little bit closer to be in your range increment. Is it 20? She tries to move Kelfris into the way of that dagger and is mm. unsuccessful at that. However, the dagger does not hit her. Okay. Oh, I tried. <laughs> Sorry, Kelfris. <laughs> and that's when you bolt. Let's, let's go. Don't, don't <laughs> Take one for the team. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we fairly met. <laughs> Was that um, a light cr light crossbow that I managed to pick up? Yes. I will move here, and then uh, she may have cover, but I'll I'll target her with a light strike. Second one is my attack action. My whole attack action gets two of them. Hopefully, one hits. Well, they both hit, but you're not uh, particularly impressed with her response as she mostly just sneers and growls at you. Hmm. I uh, must be doing something right then. <laughs> She's noticed me. That's a good thing. Uh, she releases Kelthris with a shove and scurries oh, no. onto oh, I hate the word the... scurry. <laughs> yeah. Me too, actually. It always makes me think of gross things. That's why I'm using it. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect for her. <laughs> scurries onto the uh, lumber and across to the other crate to pry up the lid on the next crate. I feel like this is some bizarre twist on a on a fantasy of rooks. <laughs> I don't know if he's shown any deviant behavior. <laughs> and she stands there on top of the lumber, kind of smirking and baring her teeth at all of you. Drive it. Okay. Mm. 
That is uh, one too many suckers for me. And he's going to give this one the devil horns. Hexing her. Before uh, trying to blast her away with a Eldritch Blast. Because that's, that's, that's what he does. Missing is also what he does, apparently. So, yeah. So this one, is, this number two is hexed. So if I ever do manage to land a hit on her, she'll get some extra damage. Though it is necrotic, I don't know what that does to her. It's kind of like a day at the spa to them. Oh crap, tell me I've been muted this whole time. I made a funny. Aww. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were muted. when you said you didn't know what Necrotic did, I said if you ever managed to hit, I guess we'll find out. Oh. No. <laughs> I, I mean, Burn. I could always just go back <laughs> no. to fireballing. <laughs> I feel like right. this is a house made out of wood, right? Like, <laughs> so advantage. <laughs> with wooden coffins and wooden <laughs> planks and... I mean, I know we said we could just burn it to the ground, but, uh... <laughs> Probably burn real good. Yeah. No, stop. It's Caitlin's turn? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was my turn. I was very distracted. <laughs> um... I will keep blasting at the original one. And, um, I'm gonna also go ahead and just use a bonus action to go ahead and shillelagh my staff for if one of them comes near me. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, you uh, successfully strike her again with the flame and uh you get the feeling that she's not your biggest fan. Yeah, a lot of undead aren't. <laughs> undead, shape changers, basically yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Keltris. All right. Uh, Keltris is going to raise his holy symbol and utter a few short prayers and a halo of divine energy is going to flow out. Uh, Radiance of the Dawn. Let me just fix this. Sorry for doing a con save against undead. I know that's a weird. So, uh, oh. what happened? Is that half damage? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and only does it resist, it breaks your faith. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the lights oh. go out. Sorry, which one was that on? Uh, to every bad oh, okay. guy around. All right. He screams, do not resist the light. 
The good news is she was already going to attack you. <laughs> That's uh, vampire spawn you just number made two. It easy. Swipes her claws at you. All right. Does so again when the first misses. Okay. So, had I not cast a spell, I would have an AC 18. Since I did, I have a 19. Okay. Wow. Round two, Rook. So, I have the Thief ability Fast Hands, which says I can use a bonus action to do a couple things, one of which is use an object. Could I use that to load a crossbow? Yeah, I would okay. think so. Alright. So he will do that, and then I will shoot her with a crossbow. I think 11 will probably miss. Indeed. Alright. Um. He's actually going to move. Actually, he's going to dash up against this wall here and crouch down and try to hide as a bonus action. Oh, wait, no, I use my bonus action to fast hands, so never mind. All right, and on to Ponto. Uh, yeah. I will, uh... The n first one with, the, with number one, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. We're going to do a couple light strikes against her to try to finish her off, hopefully... Not really. But... Uh, only the second, or only, or rather, only the first, obviously. Yeah. Uh, makes contact, and she does not look pleased with you. Uh, I, I feel like scared. <laughs> right. I feel like she hasn't looked pleased this entire encounter. I mean, unless yeah, she's is pretty. <laughs> yeah, she's just like the fl fl uh, flakiest vampire ever, just redirecting her ire from person to person. And she. She did just wake up. She's a little disoriented. Mm. Hasn't had her uh, cup of hot blood yet. Comes across to here and begins prying open. No. Let um. Free. I guess she, with my um, polearm feet, she's in a square next to me. So I, her moving there prov provokes me, so I can take an attack on her. Yes, absolutely. Uh, where is my? There we go. I'm gonna smack her with my. Yeah. And do I also get to hit the new one that popped up too? I think you only get one, uh, one. Okay. unless you're unless uh, the feet that you have overrides that. I don't and think if there's, there's anything in the language that says. Well, it's, yeah, because while you are while you are wielding. <laughs> you keep doing that to each other. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, it just, it just says while you're winning quarterstaff, other creatures provoke an opportunity to attack when they enter the reach you have. So, I don't know. I, I assume it's still, you know, one attack of opportunity per round, per right? 
That's yeah. what I would assume as well. Yeah, you I get just... one. They they combine attack of opportunity with immediate actions in this edition, and you only get one of those. One of those, right? Okay. All right, and let's see when our new friend goes. All right, she goes immediately. Yay! And she is going to snake her claws forward at Kaylin. Well, that's not surprising. <laughs> that's a miss. All right. And again. Oh, she gets two claws. I think that's also a miss. Yeah, that's a miss. <laughs> All right. And Charvik. Well... I think it's time to mess with them a bit. So, sorry, just stalling while looking at things. Um, it's a shot in the dark, but uh, yeah, it's waving. Sorry, waffling. Must make decision soon. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're just gonna use my remaining spell to uh, try to blind two of them. Oh. This is gonna be on the the two untouched ones, two and three. Right. You broke the seal, Charvik. And this is cast as a third level spell. And the save DC is... Uh, Fifteen, I think. Why does I miss the DC in that damn spell? Spike of chance, fails, back, up to same three, fails, fails, spots are deafened, flotation, I mean, just offhand, I'm assuming fifteen is probably as high as it could get, and they both rolled fifteen or higher? Yeah, so. That was useless. So, par for the course. <laughs> Sad. That's huh? the one thing as a warlock is like when when your spells miss or something, it's like I wasted a slot on that. Yeah, because you only had like two or something, right? Yep, or... that, that was yeah, my, that yep. was my second spell. <laughs> and if you yeah, so if you miss, you're literally wasting half of your major firepower. Yeah. It's depressing. I'm sorry. Just just, just a bit. Alright, Kayla. Um, I'm probably gonna just attack this one since she attacked me. And I will hit her with um my quarter staff and then hit her again as a bonus action. Alright, both of those do make contact. Okay. Anything else? Um No. <laughs> I don't wanna <laughs> don't wanna move because that'll provoke an opportunity attack, so I'll just stay there. All right, Calpris. All right, I would like to place a a 
bonfire right here. Hmm. I'm going to try to give her a hot foot. Now, would that also affect the wooden floors? <laughs> Probably. Okay. <laughs> well, laws of thermodynamics would say. <laughs> Why well, didn't if it was like a magical bonfire that didn't actually touch anything around it, except the evil zombie lady herself? <laughs> Immediately below a fire is actually one of the cooler spots it can be. But anyway. I mean, not as cool as nowhere near a fire, but... <laughs> Absolutely correct. Evil point, I suppose. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's on which one? I'm sorry. Number one. That will make it. All right. So is it half damage or no damage? Yeah, you would think they put that on there. Hmm. And until I find it, we can just say no damage. Alright, that yeah, works. Yeah, it's a saving throw or take, so that's a negate. Okay. And number two is going to attack Calabrus. That neck armor really is doing its job. <laughs> Everyone needs a courgette. Ooh, not so much. And she's going to uh, lash into you with her claws instead of grabbing you. Ouch. And Rook again. Rook will cast his crossbow aside, draw both of his daggers, and dagger, dagger, ha. Ah. Aww. You just can't hit a pretty face. I guess not. Very distracted. <laughs> can't hit an ugly one either, I guess. <laughs> it's just, you can't hit girls, that's all. <laughs> oh, that's it, that's right. Sorry, I'm out. <laughs> so distraction techniques. It's tried and true method. New bonus. Oh, no, you double attack. Okay, never mind. Pump up. If I move up here. Does that fire have um, extra effect to out, you know, outlying creatures? Nope. Just in, in that space. space. All right, that works for me. I'm gonna come here, and I am going to uh, hit it with a quarter staff twice. Yeah. And then I will spend a point of key to Flurry, which is two unarmed strikes. Gotta do something to get rid of them. Alright. Um, all but the second strike hit. Are any of these magic attacks? No. 
All right. So this first one, um, obviously going to move out of the fire, and that grants uh, three of you attacks of opportunity. All three of us? Okay. Nice. Sweet! Disappointed in you. Kelphis is okay. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling the other two didn't hit. <laughs> no. And she's going to continue around to here. Uh, she's gonna sort of eyeball this other crate and uh, shrug a little, smirk at you, and strike you with her claws, Kaylin. Isn't that where Rook is? Wait, I don't see her. Where'd she go? Oh, oh, I didn't see Rook there. Sorry, I think I'm having layer issues. <laughs> I was like, it looks like she disappeared. Okay. Then she'll only come over to here. And strike it. Rook instead. Ouch. I mean, the good news is she didn't have advantage. The bad news is she's opting to grapple. And use her bite. Oh, are you, are you muted? Are you muted? I think you're muted. Yeah, sorry, ten yeah. plus five. <laughs> Um, damage. Yep, 10 plus 5. And then your maximum hit point is reduced by the 5. Are you uncanny dodging oh. that? Uh, e can I if I'm grappled? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't think so. I think the only thing that grapple does is keep you from using movement. Like ducking or juking out of the way or something. Yeah. Shouldn't be an issue. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, yeah, then I'll, I'll half it. Would it also half the necrotic? Um. So would I take like five and then half of the other five? So three? I think damage is I have generally. I have no idea. Damage is generally added up all together and then you reduce. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering in the, for the. for the. I lose. Hit five hit points, or permanent. Of my hit point max. So I'm wondering if I can half that as well. Um. Oh yeah. On a damage taken. Yeah, I would say that you would half that as well. Okay. Vampire number two is going to continue to attack Kelthris. Ouch. And she opts to grapple as well. And bites into your armor yet again. Wait, All right. Which one? Number two? Didn't two number come, two already go? Two I thought two after. was... Oh, sorry, that would be yeah. number three. Yeah, okay, I was so thinking then, like... Yeah. <laughs> I really wish I had put... Uh, which one was which on the turn order? Yeah, number I think two, two was... So that would be number three, so mm -hmm. I guess... If it's easier, you makes... can mouse over the turn order, and it will highlight whichever token that you're mousing over. That is helpful. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. 
Um, so I guess that makes Kaylin the target of that grapple and that fight. Um, the claws... That claw, 23, that was for me. Mm-hmm. That hits, the bite misses. Alright. So you so don't take that take damage, she grappled I, instead. I'll take the slashing damage, though. No, because she... Right. She, she foregoes the damage in order to grapple you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I, I misunderstood. Okay. She came in for a hug, and it was kind of awkward. You know. Yeah. <laughs> she went in for a kiss, just kind of got your jawbone instead. Yeah. Seeing this is getting uh, a little personal, Tarvik slips up here, and uh, Eldritch flames leak out from his eyes as he launches two Eldritch Blasts, which I forgot I should be doing at level 5, not just one. Oh. <laughs> so the first one is to three, which will also push her into the flames. See. So you... the second one, of course, misses! Because that's what he does. You know. And since that pushed her back, that probably broke the grapple on... Uh, or just dragged Kaylin. me with her into the flames. <laughs> I, GM Fiat on how that's going to work. Uh, no, I buy that you would uh, let go of that when... Um, or why don't we figure she makes a con save to try and hold on. I buy that. I reckon it would be a relatively high. Uh, yeah. No. So, Unless she had enough. advantage for whatever reason, which I can't imagine. No. <laughs> and Dex, uh, she does make on the oh, bonfire. That's nice. That would have oh, been well. nice. Yeah, that would. <laughs> <laughs> Real nice. <clears throat> okay. I need something. <laughs> <laughs> and Kaylin, you are now free. Awesome. Um. Oh, you know what? My spell save is actually sixteen. Uh, oh. I just saw it here. Sweet. Doki, then she takes that damage. Cool. And does it finish her? <laughs> no. Three, no. Was, three was not hurt very much. Oh, that's true. Um. One is the one that took all the beating. So, I feel like at some point you guys are going to think about vampires and realize something. And the f- what? I, the fact that they tend to heal themselves, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um hoping the fire might stop that. We just need to push them all into the fire. Yeah. I don't really want to burn this guy's house down at the same time. Well, it doesn't move anywhere other than just this spot. That's what's... Well, yeah, but I was thinking about adding to it. (laughs) That's a consideration. (laughs) And my spell specifically says that things do burn around it. <laughs> okay. I don't. Ah, I'm panicking. I need, ah. Um. Okay. I'm just gonna continue to hit this lady, if we want to call her that. So I'll do that, and then where's my my bonus, that one misses though, I'm sure. Yeah, the second definitely misses. The uh, first does hit. See, crazy witches who eat children all burn down their house, but this poor guy who... I mean, he made a bad decision. (laughs) But... (laughs) 
poor life choices. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. So I think uh, at this point, since none of them are dead yet, um, I think it's time to cast Bless on some of us. And I'm going to cast it at second level. Uh, because this is concentration, it will bring that bonfire to a close. Ah, I should have cast my spell, that's okay. <laughs> but now Ponto, Kaelin, and Rook all have an extra d4 to hit and damage. Or, Yay. you know, attack, roll, and saving throw. Very nice. Will that be all? Yeah, that's casting one action, and that's it. Okay. And number two seizes this chance to. That went oh, to. Oh. Sorry, that went to um, Charvik as well, because I. At second level, so I get four. Cool. Okay. So that's everybody but you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. And she uh, does not opt to grab you for spam now. Sorry, he was on attack at. Oh, sorry. Um, that was at Keltris. All right. So if that's at Keltris, um, I'd like to use Warding Flare. Please. This is basically just gives her disadvantage. Okay. She misses on both strikes. Sweet. Rook. Ah. Uh. Rook will... I'm going to attack one diagonal from me, number one. With the dagger. I will add the d4. If I can type. Fourteen to hit. Fourteen. Does not hit. All right. Uh, then I am going to disengage. You're grappled, sir. Oh, still? As far as I know. Oh, was, was he grappled? Oh, I don't know if he yeah. was grappled. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought, it was just, I thought it was just a grapple to fight. No, it stay, you stay in the grapple until you uh, either get let go or try to get... Um, in that case, I'm going to stab her with my other dagger. Which I will not hit with a 14. D4. I think I can only use it once, right? Nope, we get back. Oh, okay. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. That hit. Alright, and then I will roll damage. Unfortunately, she's not next to anybody, so no sneak attack. I'm sorry, that damage should actually just be uh, a one. Hmm. All right. And on to Ponto. I thought of this before, and I forgot to act upon it. Uh, this is the second story of the building. Top story of the building. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the roof made of? 
straw. Hmm. Yes, duh. Um, I don't have a way to do it, not that I know of, because uh, unless my light strike can do anything to the straw roof. Oh, nice. nice. Second floor, and you, I think you got a key jump or something, right? Um, it's gonna break. Up. It's my my intent is to punch a hole in the roof with my light strike. Because mm-hmm. last I knew, it was afternoon in this place. Didn't know um, if that would be mm-hmm. something I could could do or no. Sounds awesome to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. To the roof. All right. Uh, whereabouts are you trying to place this hole? Uh, I will go uh, directly above me. See where that goes. Hey, buddy. And there is now a hole in the roof of the coffin maker shop. And then uh, I get a second attack. So can I aim that one, uh, the square, well, the spot next to that, going towards the vampire spawn? Uh, sure. did critical damage to that roof. The roof is easier to do than a whole building, <laughs> Pyros. <laughs> Much better. That was my I like that white yes. one. Alright. So there, there is now a massive hole Hi, in the roof of the Often Maker Shop. Okay, no. <laughs> Does that do anything? Is that... Um... Cancel. They, uh... If not, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, um, you may remember that it is a particularly dim and, uh, dull in Barovia. Um, there's never really any true sunlight permeating through. Um, the I'd say it's enough, enough light to prevent regeneration, but not enough to uh, cause damage. So, it, it has been of help, but I, not uh, any form of lethal damage. Yep. Alright. Oh, it had, it had one other effect. <laughs> Boy. Oh my god. We you are a traveling are circus, on... aren't we? Yeah, you guys are why I'm on migraine pills. <laughs> <laughs> it had one other effect, though, Ponto. It's, uh, pissed off a vampire. Oh. What? So much oh. that she completely struck wide. See? I ain't scared. <laughs> uh, I ain't scared no vampire. Uh, you just vampire. That second claw will hit, though. Alright, and she's going to choose to grapple you with that. Would the sunlight by chance impose disadvantage to her strikes? Um... <laughs> I know. Um, it's enough to stop regeneration, that might be enough to... <clears throat> do something. Uh... Alright, I'll give it to you. 
So yeah, no, no damage, no. The right, scared. <laughs> I feel like you flinched a little, then then you're like, oh yeah, I'm not scared. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't can hurt. beat up buildings, I can't, but I can stand here toe to toe with vampires. <laughs> I, I won't lie, I was waiting anxiously for you to crit fail the the attack roll on the roof. No. <laughs> it would have been interesting. That would be impressive, like if you managed to not be able to hit the roof. Yeah. All right. All so right. Char Charvik. Uh... Um, it's still number one's turn. And oh. now she's got. Uh, it's okay. It's she's got. Um, so eager for someone to successfully bite. She's got two attacks on. Oh wait, no, only one can be a, a bite. Yeah, so nine, the first nine, one nine bite. Alright, and then she claws at you while you're grappled. I want to hit. Mm. But I'm gonna yeah. use my uncanny dodge to half it. Alright. And Jarvik. How bad is number one looking? Um, not. Uh, she's certainly not on her last legs, but she. I mean, you can tell she's marked up, but she's got lots of fight left in her. Okay. All right. So Jarvik will uh, move up and hop up on this crate over here. And look down at her with his palm out in front of him as two beams of, of Eldritch energy shoot out, trying to push her aside. Oh yeah. I think there's a link between your success and your, uh, ex like, your description. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, every time you're more descriptive. <laughs> you just gotta be confident, and the dice will, will be confident with you. <laughs> So between anyway. those between okay. those two hits, she will fly back against the wall here on top of the this pile of loose lumber. All right. Very yeah. nice. And Charvik will just look down at Rook and just give him a, a toothy smirk. <laughs> yeah. That is how you do it. Thanks for uh, distracting her for me. Would we decide a con save to try and... Um, yeah, I don't think oh, with yeah. two of a 14 is going to cut anything. So, uh, she releases that. Rook. Yeah. And, uh, Kaylin. <clears throat> okay. I... Um... That one's out of our way from now. I'm gonna moonbeam this one. Alright. And... She is extremely unpleased with that damage. <laughs> He's, uh, hisses loudly and winces in obvious pain. Kelthris. Alright, Kelthris is going to, uh... uh hmm. Oh, hope stay put. Um, which one looks the worse off? Number two or number three? Number three. Alright. 
I'll slam the staff down. Say, stay down. Get back in your box. <laughs> Get back in your box. Who do you think you are? She is not down from that, but you can tell she is exceptionally close. All right. And number two is still attacking Calthus. Ineffectively. All right. And um, unfortunately, it is 11, so I have to wrap up for tonight. Oh no! I know. You did a bad job at killing these things. (laughs) But uh, I suspect that one way or the other, next week will be um, finished with this uh, section of this campaign. Okay. Cool. You guys want to move back on to uh, Out of the Abyss after that, then? Absolutely. Sure. All right. Oh, well, thank you, Mix. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Enjoyed it. See you. Yeah, have a good night. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Enjoy it.